Hello everyone, so I'm just going to do a kind of a little tutorial video uh, and hopefully it won't take too long but it's more of a modification to the screen that I use for my night vision kits and the screen is a, a generic uh, three and a half inch TFT screen um, reversing a car monitor camera whichever you want to call it um, but I'm going to have a look on Google, Amazon, you'll find out which variant it is and generally what I want to do is actually put one of these gel filters, red or green one or a combination of the two, to see on what kind of impact I'm going to get uh, on the glare that comes off the screen. And the reason being, it does come around every now and again on uh, how much glare you get back on your face. Personally, I don't think it's too much, but others can um, obviously say that they think it's a bit uh, higher. Uh, by all means, you can uh, reduce the glare from any screen by altering the settings on the back and in a combination of that reducing the brightness of the screen via the um, the settings uh, there is a brightness setting on the camera but what I'll do is I'll go through on how to fit one of these so I'm probably going to do uh, one red one green a double up on both and then uh, one green one red so you get both in line and see whether it's actually usable um, unfortunately what I won't be able to do is use any form of DVR to capture this because DVR sits between the camera and screen so you won't be able to see the benefit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and utilize the um, my mobile phone to catch that as we all know trying to capture these screens on a mobile phone is not the best at all anyway but we'll see how it goes right so what we'll do is just go through what you need initially so you need a craft knife like this something to protect your tabletop uh, so you don't get scratched on it you don't want to be ruining your antique uh, desk a uh, metal ruler like this this is uh, just to help guiding through the cutting element and then you'll need your TFT screen as well as your filters now just so you're aware is you've got this is at the front here around these plastic edges this is not a screen so you don't have to worry too much about you know making little uh, cuts or damages um, what you do have to be wary of is behind here and also below some plastic you do have a ribbon cable that connects the screen uh, when I take this off you'll see it and the circuit board which is uh, on the back and it is generally separated by some plastic whatever you do try not to press too hard or think that you're going to actually get through this part here the reason being is if you cut that ribbon uh, the chances are you're not going to have a screen left to play around with so all we need to do is need to pick a, a corner uh, and any corner will do so I'll just go for this one initially and what you want to do is you want to get your knife and if I can get this in here you want to get your knife and go in as, as much as you can and then lift and you'll know when you've got it quite right because it will come up now you want to be careful because if you get this wrong this might be my famous words if you get this wrong you'll end up skewing yourself it does take a little bit of lifting but once once you get it once you get it lifted there we go so once you get it lifted you'll be able to push your blade in slightly don't go over the top but what you want to do is gently pull it round and you'll see the screen starting to lift and you'll hear the glue and then just gently bring it round like so and that's all you want to do you just want to part the part it enough to raise it you sometimes find that once you've done this if you don't do it like that it's that well set I'll go back in here fucker it's probably worth I think on so you don't have that problem again doing this totally on the fly and 
just leaving something like that in there. The reason being is that then if it does drop back, it won't go back all the way through. And what we want to do is just bring this all the way around. So we're separating the glue. Don't worry too much if you score the black plastic because it's not going to matter overly. And you want to give that a firm pull. You can take time with this. And there you go. So that part's off. So this is your, the screen that I referred to. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of glue on the screen itself, but that should be all intact. And again, where I was mentioned down here, that's where it is. if you were to get your blade down there, there is a likelihood that you probably uh, end up with some damage to the screen. So I want to put that to one side at the moment and we'll come back to that. Now what I want to do is this is here is double sided tape. Um, by all means you can just easily take this off with your thumb squeaking noise. So there we go. So we clean that up the best we can. So now we've got that. You, if, if you want to, by all means, keep a, an eye on which side you want to utilise this for. Then what we want to do is take our gel, co gel coating And cut out the shape. Now, if I just take this, by all means, you can do this with a pair of scissors, you don't have to use a craft knife. Um, I'm just going to find it hopefully easier to cut with because I have the lovely affliction of being left handed and no scissors in the world work. I haven't pressed through hard enough. So 
So that's one slice. As you can see, fits quite snugly. But what we want to do, thinking about it, is so once you've got that, you want to trim just a slight bit off on, uh, the, the top edge and also these side edges. The reason being we need a surface to actually stick this down to. So, once that's on, Didn't realise that this is a tough, tougher than I thought. So once you've got your lens all set, what you want to do is take your screen. Depend on how your screen set up, these do vary slightly uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer from what I've seen, uh, but you might have a thicker edge and a thinner edge, uh, so just be mindful when you're putting this on, you get it the right way up. It's not going to be the end of the world if you don't get it, uh, but it just might look a bit odd. And then what you want to do is just initially offer it in, right so. I wouldn't recommend going straight away and sticking it down, the reason being is you can, um, if you're not happy with the f one leg, at least you can put in two. So I've got the screen all ready now, so just give it a flip on. There we go. So as we can see, Gav on TV. So that comes through as an orange tin, but, tinge, but that's quite... I'm quite impressed with that. I'm going to stick a, a second layer on just to see on how that works and then uh, I'm going to put the green layer back on. So um, right, I'll come back. Right well I know that you can barely see anything but hopefully I've got this best as I can so I'm gonna try and explain glare but I'm currently in a pitch black office I've got glare from my screen on me but how I've got this positioned which I can't show you but basically here we go behind there is that's where I've got my camera and that's got no glare coming through from my screen what it has got is my infrared torch which I can barely see if I turn it off you can see that's the uh, kind of glare that would get from the screen, which is not exactly what we would get if we was out shooting, but we'd probably get something more brighter like that as if we was out rat shooting and so on. Um, so I wanted to is kind of keep it as intense as I can uh, without destroying things. Now, to give you an indication of what a single layer of glare will do, I'm also going to try and show in terms of how it would cast across. If this works, this would be amazing. But so what I'll do is I'll just put so we can see we've got a kind of a around here, as you can see on the camera. So we bring it down. You can see that that glare is now reduced. Um, now that's actually quite impressive as it stands, but I can still see this image when I put up to four layers of red film on and you can see the the contrast difference between that's with the four that's with none so there's a, a, a huge amount of difference now in terms of I'm going to try and see if you can get my 
Oh, I guess it's not going to work, but I will do it for so I'm going to get my screen, I'm going to turn my screen off. So I don't know what you can see uh, there, but if you can see something that's great. But I can edit that out anyway. Uh, that's just an absolute bizarre way of showing you how these things are done. So if we go back, back to the desk. So if we come back, take these filters off. So as we, we can see that one, just one layer of red seems to be quite good at reducing. Now, actually, I wasn't expecting that. I thought green would just be as good, but as you can see, I've still got quite a fair bit of glue. I've only got three sheets of green, but I think this is actually going to prove that red might be better than green. Yeah, so again, uh, I know that I did four on the other one, but let's do the, the old mugshot version. So if I get my face this way. Again, I don't know how this is going to come out because I can't see the screen itself. So we go, that's that. And lastly, uh, what I want to do is just do a combination with one red and one green. I don't think there's going to be all that much difference at all. Um, oops, put that there. So even even as we knew, uh, know the red on its own was more than sufficient to get rid of some of this light here. Again, our uh, the human eye is not as sensitive to uh, the frequency of lights of other animals. So without actually being one of those animals, you're going to be a bit stuck. But um, it seems to be okay. Which would I go for? I I quite think the red would be quite good. But you know, everyone's going to have their own opinion. So. That, I think, is that for now. Uh, Hopefully, that's all. That's my target. It's a lot clearer on the screen than it is on the camera. Uh, and also, I'm using a different scope this time around. But that's the kind of image that I'm getting. So, just rest mostly as you can see I'm now about a meter away that's the only kind of glow that you get so there we go uh, conclusion is red's the best I think uh, based on the footage that I've just done and also when I was do just doing the kind of put together and doing the comparison between the green and the red uh, I didn't do the green on the screen uh, green with the scope cam footage the reason being is I saw no point at all uh, it was quite conclusive of uh, what kind of evidence we got through so I'd recommend if you want to by all means go for red if you fancy green then there's no problem I would probably say you're going to need a lot more layers um, you're probably going to be struggling to fit anything more than four in there you might get five in there a push but you could have to put some additional taping down to keep your screen secure um, but apart from that um, it works quite well I'm quite looking forward to getting out and uh, seeing on how it does perform one thing I want to get out there and, and try to do this type of video on your own is really difficult is to see with my own eyes with a, a, a different camera to see on how that is picked up one I might use the uh, DVR uh, using the uh, spotter that I've just built see on how that comes through uh, pointing at uh, someone who's using uh, my rifle with the uh, scope scope addition already attached and see on how that comes through on an infrared uh, kind of field of vision um, and then I'll use a different camera to try and catch uh, the, you know, the normal kind of camera eye footage. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything if I'm perfectly honest but proof will only come out when I do that. I'll do a kind of a mop up video of it uh, with the results at a later date just going to wait till weather improves. So Hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Um, there's more to follow. I uh, might release another one before the, uh, the end of this year. Uh, but if not, look forward to 2016 with a lot more to come. Thanks a lot.